thoroughly impressed with when Rick Majerus gets his defense going. You play New Mexico in the pit, you've got a war. Well, they hold them to 39 points, 31 percentage, 31% uh, in field goal shooting defense, and this is where Utah's tough. Yeah, Fresno has a 12-game home winning streak, but Tark knows Rick Majerus' defense will show up today. They've got to play solid. To be successful in college basketball, you have to win on the road. How about the Mon UConn? Stick around. Your game is coming up. Jerry West on hand to see some of the talent. It's coming up. Utah and Fresno State. Let's see. College in four years. Costs up 40% over the next five. Somebody do the math here. It would be great Thanks, if our money would grow as fast as these kids. I can't believe Will paying for college be as painful as this? Let's get ready. Hey, that kid just drop a pretzel? Because I like pretzels. I really well, like We'll be able to help with their education. I wonder if we should have put that money in a trust. Maybe we would have... I hope she was kidding about college in Hawaii. Thank you, Payne Weber. My definition of a good neighbor is someone who's there ready and willing to help you at your time of need. That's why State Farm is proud to work with many organizations like Neighborhood Housing Services. I think State Farm supports organizations like NHS because they help an old neighborhood become new again and alive again. And I see people that are certainly, they take pride in, in ownership of where they live. I've seen the results and I've seen what can happen in a community with the combined efforts of NHS and State Farm. Toyota Sienna did better overall in Insurance Institute crash tests than any other vehicle tested, ever. When you had the idea, you were just a kid. But lately you've had to buy into some pretty adult stuff. Like strategies for attracting and retaining the best employees, and maximizing shareholder value. At Arthur Anderson, we help people make those kinds of decisions, which lets them concentrate on things like transforming complex three-dimensional objects into simple digital data. You know, kid stuff. Arthur Anderson, helping in ways you never imagined. Hurry up, we're missing the best part of the day. Catch anything yet? Just a brake job on a Honda. Pep Boys ASE certified technicians will install quality rate Vestas brakes for as low as $79.99. Nationally warrantied brakes from $79.99. Is this living or what? Shh. Engine diagnosis. Very high tech. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. Welcome back to Fresno. Payne Weber, college basketball on ABC. An emotional day here this afternoon as Chris Heron, one of three seniors, saying farewell. He will play in his last home game here at Fresno State this afternoon. You know, I marked this game on my calendar weeks ago, Dan. You talked about Utah and Fresno State, Majerus and Tarkanian. Yeah, what a matchup. You've got two of the elite coaches in the country, two coaches that have put up unbelievable numbers. And you look at that graphic right there and Rick Majerus, Jerry Tarkanian. So this is going to be quite a matchup on Payne Weber College basketball. Not only two great teams, but outstanding coaches. And this could be arguably the biggest game of Jerry Tarkanian's career as the head coach here at his alma mater, Fresno State. Back in a moment. Out here, you don't worry about running out of gas. You worry about running out of dirt. Folks, your colonel's shaking things up with my new extra crispy chicken. Right now, get eight pieces plus six of my honey barbecue wings, just $9.99. That price ain't gonna last, so shake a leg. Nothing tops ice cream better than Hershey's chocolate syrup. So feel free to pour it on. But do watch out for those cherries.
Where do they find this one? Chapel Hill. Toxicology? Negative. your days and probably more evenings than you'd care to admit trying to align your company's strategies with process and technology and managing risks to your global operations at Arthur Anderson we can help you make those kinds of decisions and that just might free you up enough to take care of something that's really important Arthur Anderson helping in ways you never imagined they're not skating for the judges. They're not skating for the medals. They're skating for the fans. The Chevrolet Skating Spectacular, tomorrow at 1.30 on ABC. ABC flashes back with Richard Dreyfus. I will use anything to teach a student to love music. Of all the lives he's changed, the one that's changed the most was his own. The network television premiere, Mr. Holland's Opus, Sunday at 7, 6 Central, on ABC's Flashback Weekend. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC and Raycom Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber, for the advice. Toyota, every day belongs to you. Make it count. For quality and safety, ask for Ray Bestos, the best in brakes. And Reese's Nut Rages. You don't eat it, you survive it. Selling Arena here in Fresno, California. Good matchup here in the WAC as the running Utes of Utah, perfect in the conference at 11-0, play their final road game of the year. And Chris Heron, the popular senior here at Fresno State, plays his last home game of the season. Jerry Tarkanian's Bulldogs, 7-4 in the conference, 18-9 overall. There is Jerry Tarkanian, who just earned his 700th career victory as a head coach in major college basketball for the past 28 years. Take a look at our lineups brought to you by Toyota. Hano Metala has a lot of scouts here today to watch him play. He, along with Andre Miller and Alex Jensen, are three of the best players in the WAC, if not the nation. In fact, in the last meeting, Jensen had a triple-double against Fresno State. Rick Majerus, the head coach of Utah in his 10th season, the native of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, took his team to the national championship one year ago. Starting lineups again by Toyota. Terrence Roberson, one of the best three-point shooters in the nation. Willie Farley has played very well as of late. Heron joined in the backcourt by the number three scorer in the WAC, Courtney Alexander, with over 20 points a game. Yeah, Courtney, a terrific player, a guy that can create his own shot anytime he wants. So this is a this is really an elite backcourt for Fresno State. The strength of this club is with Heron and Courtney Alexander. Of course, Jerry Tarkanian, 28th season. 706 wins, but more impressive than that, only 167 losses, Mike. So Jerry has done really a magnificent job through his career. Well, what he wants to do is bring his alma mater to the NCAA tournament for the first time under his leadership, a place where Rick Majerus is getting very accustomed to taking his team. Defensively, they are number three in the nation. Look at those numbers, allowing 53 and a half points a game. Well, that, that's how Utah beats you. They, they don't they don't come out and spurt you offensively. What they do is they put multiple stops on you at the defensive end. This is a club that will make the extra pass. They'll put the ball near the goal. They will not beat themselves. And in my opinion, one of the better teams attacking a pressing type defense. And I think what Fresno State has to do is come out and pressure Utah. But don't forget, even against Kentucky in the national championship game, Mike, a year ago, Kentucky took the press off because Utah was attacking it successfully. So Rick Majerus really down deep, hoping that Fresno State will start out in the press because he feels his club can execute against it and score. It should be noted as we talk about that Utah defense that Fresno State's 74 points against Utah in the first meeting of these two teams back on January 25th are the most points that any team has scored against 
Utah this season. They did lose that basketball game, though, a final of 87 to 74. 16 straight victories for Utah. Duke with the 22, the number one team in the nation. And, and how about College of Charleston? They just keep rolling. They just, just keep winning games. An electric atmosphere here today at Selland Arena. A sellout crowd. And this game imperative for Fresno State if they want to make it to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think, Mike, this is the biggest game Jerry Tarkanian has had since he has resumed or come back to Fresno State to coach. I think biggest game for him. No question, as you said, if they win, I think they're in the NCAA tournament. They finish on the road with Hawaii and San Diego State. I think they can win those two games. So this is a pivotal game. If they win it, doesn't matter what they do in the WAC tournament if they can finish with the two wins on the road. Good look by Heron. And it rolls in for Courtney Alexander. Utah in the road jerseys, the red uniforms with the black trim. And in the home whites, Fresno State coming out and playing very intensely defensively. Of course, man to man by, by Fresno State. They're going to jump and trap and Metala again. And th this is what Metala brings to the table. He's a young man at 6'10 that can put the ball on the ground. He can break down a defense. He can shoot it on the perimeter and a very, very difficult cover. So Metala doing a nice job of getting the ball inside. Here's another thing they do. They get to the foul line all the time. This Utah team will consistently be at this free throw line because they stretch the defense and they take it to the goal. Heron fouled Metala. Metala short on the first. Hano Metala from Helsinki, Finland. The top free throw shooter in the conference. So surprisingly, he misses the first at 84% on the year. The number two scorer for the Utes. Finds his range on the second. And Fresno has the early lead. Willie Farley, the senior from Chicago, pulls up for three. And the rebound by Andre Miller. Oh, yeah. Miller, number 30, no, number 24. And he is one of the best in the nation. Yeah, and what he does real well is pass to the post. He, he is a young man, and if you watch Andre Miller, he could feed the post. And again, here his Metala inside does a very nice job of establishing defense. And if you're going to play right behind him inside, you're, you're going to pay the price. You're going to have to front. Roberson that time just played directly behind Metala, and he will take it to the goal every time. Roberson with one personal along with Chris Heron. Metal at 6'10", 240 pounds. And he is three of four early from the line. And the Utes lead 3-2. Of course, Utah man to man. And they will jump and trap and extend. Melvin Eli, that is way beyond his range. Yeah, not, not a good shot. Well advised shot by Melvin Eli. You have to get the ball inside, put a few more touches on it. There he is again, look at that pass. Miller spinning it into traffic. Put up off the side by Nate Altoff, and another foul underneath. And you know, Mike, the one thing you forget about when you look at Andre Miller, you say, well, he, you know, he's a great leader. He, he makes the extra pass, but also an excellent rebounder for a guard. I mean, he's a guy that will get his four, five, six rebounds a game from the guard position. Roberson picked up the foul, Dan, so that is two quick ones on Terrence Roberson, the senior from Saginaw, and there is Andre Miller. A Wooden, Naismith, and Oscar Robertson finalist for Player of the Year honors. Now, you talk about Players of the Year in a country, you think you think of Elton Brand at Duke and Steve Francis at Maryland, and uh, but Andre Miller right up there with those, Chris Porter at Auburn, and... I like Melvin Levin at Cincinnati. He's had, had a tremendous year also. And Richard Hamilton, of course, at UConn. But Andre Miller also in that, uh, in that class. Heron gives it up. That is the one thing that Chris Heron, if he can do today well, penetrate and dish, he is as good as any in the nation at doing that very thing. Yeah, Chris has been in a, in a bit of a shooting slump, but I don't think there's anyone better at breaking the defense down and then having the presence of mind to find someone when he is doubled up. So Heron trying to make everybody else on his club better, and he can do that. Altoff fouled Willie Farley. Willie just a 58% free throw shooter. And he 
misses them both. When you have to stop the ball here. And Miller very dangerous in this situation. Utah playing as well as any team in the nation right now. And a little miscommunication between Jensen and Matullah. I, I think what Nevola was doing in that situation, Mike, I think he was trying to go back door. I think Neva had had his man set up, and he's saying it's my fault because he was cutting the other way. That's something that Utah does not do often. This is a club that will not beat themselves. They don't turn it over very often in the half court. High look. And Melvin Eli misses the easy one. Points in the paint have been difficult for Fresno State to get all year. Not for Utah. <laughs> they, just, they just lob it in there. You front them. And Metal has already got five. I mean, you just throw it in there. He gets it and finishes it. So a 7-2 lead for Utah. Heron pulls up. And he misses his first shot of the day. He took only four shots against BYU on Thursday night. Back the other way. Left-handed lay-in too strong. And the Bulldogs fight for the rebound. Roberson still in the game with two quick fouls. He has the basketball. Gets it up top to Melvin Eli. It's a nice job by Jensen to negate uh, 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 Courtney Alexander from getting the ball. Jensen doing a terrific job playing Alexander without the ball. Eli defended by Alltalk. Melvin loses it. And another turnover by the Bulldogs. Okay. Turned right back over by Utah. Good job by Farley to get back in traffic and cause that turnover. He is very active when he's on the floor, no question about that. Alexander for three. They love to shoot from the perimeter, Fresno State. And if they get hot from outside, they have a chance to win this basketball game today. Yep. BYU coach Steve Cleveland said the other night, if anyone's going to beat Utah, it's going to be Fresno State because of their athleticism on the perimeter. And, and they have to play a full 40 minutes. Uh, they, they, they cannot just play half a game. You can't let this kind of thing happen. Rotate defensively. Again, Metala, and he's being guarded by Roberson. Roberson has the two fouls. Who is Roberson guarding? He's guarding Metala. Who got the ball that time down the floor? Metala and he scored so that's a perfect read and a good job by Utah on the half court back the other way too strong from Heron to Melvin Eli Utah so good defensively they do not give you much at all they haven't given much to anybody all season long now you might want to focus in again on, on who Terrence Roberson is guarding and, and this is a very very tough cover uh, for Terrence because he's on Metala again. So see if they run Metala with the ball. Well, he went for the ball and left them all alone that time. Metala, short. And the rebound by Farley. Tony Harvey in the game for Andre Miller for Utah. Heron, good look. Melvin Eli goes up strong and again can't finish. And that's been a problem all year. They have not been able to follow, finalize near the goal. And Eli, you love Eli, he works hard. But uh, he has to finish those plays. Alex Jensen with the triple-double in the first meeting of these two teams. Up top to Medela. Jensen had the look. See if they go to Altoff now because he's being guarded by Robeson. Six on the shot clock. Well, nice, great defense, isn't it, Mike? Good job. And the jumper too strong. And Fresno State pulls off the rebound. They have to play defense like that all afternoon if they are going to have a chance to win this game. Pushing underneath between Killian and Courtney Alexander. And Courtney Alexander, a big guard, a guy 6'6". He'll post up if he's being guarded by a smaller player. 9-5 early, Utah leads. The market's going to go up 20% next year. What are the tickets, numbers? folks? I'm out. I keep reading about tax efficient investing. Should I be doing that? Everybody else seems. Hmm, let's see. Rates are falling, inflation's low, more stocks or more bonds. Hey, hey. Oh, man. Look at this investment strategies for you. Great. Just for me and 5 million other people. Thank you, Payne Weber. So, what will it take for you to buy this car You're today? You're buying this SUV today and I want you to drive out I want of you here. to walk out of here with Just for you, I got to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to my boss. my supervisor. Hey, we're going to have a deal, right? 
log on to autobuytel.com. Arm yourself with dealer invoice and retail list prices. Choose any make, any model. No hassles, no haggling, low prices. Autobuytel.com. We're changing the way America buys cars. Clean up, aisle five. We can't afford all this. Timmy, get that towing package back. Didn't our truck come with shocks? Not the heavy duty ones. What size is this? Uh, 16 inch. Need a price check on the 16 inch alloy. Nobody wants to pay too much for options. That's why Forerunners come with a package of our most popular accessories discounted up to $900. Extra value packages available on all Forerunner models. Tests have shown that some brake pads can take more than 20 feet longer to stop a car. An independent lab developed D3EA, the only lab test which determines if brake pads are consistent with federal safety standards. Raybestos professional grade brakes are D3EA certified. What was 20 feet from you after your last sudden stop? So demand Raybestos. And look for this seal. Ray Bestus, the best in breaks. Groovy. Tonight's happening with America's favorite family. Oh, Alice. It's a very Brady sequel. Tonight, part of ABC's Flashback Weekend. All right, Payne Weber, college basketball, Utah, enjoying a 9-5 to five lead. Now, here's why they win. I mean, you get him in the half court here, and you're going to isolate, and here's Roberson. He's got the three fouls. They're going to bring Medela all the way over to the ball. They're going to post him, and they're going to put the ball down low. Now, here comes Medela. Now, watch where the ball goes. The ball goes to the outside hand. It goes to the low position. So Medela is the guy with the fouls. They're going to throw it all the way on the outside hand. Medela turns, and he finishes, but he's being guarded by a guy in foul trouble. So Rick Majerus recognizes that. You look at the 21 wins and uh, good coaching by Utah. Off the inbounds play, Randy Holcomb, the sophomore, entering the game for the first time. He does finish underneath where Eli was having some troubles. A couple of lineup changes for Fresno. Medela up top. Into the painted area, and he rolls it in. Hano Medela off to a great start, has nine points already in the contest. Heron was pushed by Tony Harvey. And I don't think there's any question that Fresno State cannot win this game unless Chris Heron comes up big. He had nine threes against San Diego State in their win, but since that game, he's really been in a shooting slump. So Heron looking to be a little bit more offensive minded. The guys had some problems in, in terms of health. And you look at the numbers, and uh, both teams actually doing a good job at the defensive end. And Heron again, the focal. What a matchup this is. Heron and Andre Miller. Heron gives it away. Three ball. And Medela there for the rebound. Miller back in, up ahead to Jensen, and an easy lay-in by Alex Jensen. And that is one thing that the coaches were talking about yesterday for Fresno State. They said that cannot happen today in the first matchup. Fresno State gave Utah 24 layups. Too many easy yeah, buckets. I'd, I'd say it's hard, hard to win when you're giving up 24 layups. And, and that's one thing Utah will do, control fast break. Miller with the ball. Jensen runs the floor. Opportunities. Again, good defense. Here they go again. Miller quickly gets it after the turnover. And Andre goes to the hole strong and lays it in and is fouled. Well, they make you pay big time when you make a mistake. Everybody thinks that Utah is not an open court team, but they are. When they all of a sudden create a turnover, they've got finishers. Andre Miller, a magnificent play in the open court. Nice job to take it to the goal. Jensen's a finisher. Metala, a guy who can also finish to the goal. Altal, another big, strong guy around the basket. So look at all the numbers, Andre Miller. I mean, uh, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> Andre with the rebounds, and the rebound's critical. Very good rebounding guard. Well, they can turn this into a four-point trip down the court. As Miller missed his opportunity for the three-point play. Medela defended up top. Phil Cullen, the freshman, in the game for the first time. He has Jensen. They're backing off of Cullen, too. They ain't going to guard him on the outside. 
triple team. And that leaves a man wide open. And that is the one thing Utah recognizes so well when a man is open after the defense collapses. Great follow by a freshman named Phil Cullen. Ten point Utah lead. Mike and making it look easy. And, then, and this will really typifies the way Utah's been playing. Nice move by Alexander. But they're keying this with the defense. Seven points for Courtney. He has to get heated up along with Chris Heron. But the first thing you have to do is try to stop Utah. And they are unable to do it as Medela goes strong to the hole. And he was fouled. Well, you can see why all the NBA people love uh, Medela. I mean, he, he's a big man that can put the ball on the ground. Watch him use his left hand. Multi-dimensional with the ball. Can go strong to the glass. Takes a power move. And the little touch fouls aren't going to bother him. Uncharacteristic of Hano to miss a couple of free throws so far here in the game. He was fouled by Shamario Richard. Roberson checks back in. Remember, he's got two. And, and Rick Majera said, if, if we've got one problem, we're not shooting free throws very effectively as a team. He's very worried about his free throw shooting. He says, we're usually in the top five in the country in free throw shooting, but this club only shooting it at 64% in the whack and about 68 overall, and he feels that could really hurt him in crunch time in the NCAA tournament. In the last two minutes, Utah on a 9-2 run. Oh, stolen beautifully. Tony Harvey leaves it on the floor to Cullen. And he gets it himself. Young Demetrius Porter had his pocket picked by Tony Harvey, the junior college transfer. He is a dangerous player. He wears number five for Utah. Watch him all day long. Alexander picks up the foul. Utah foul number 15. Tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC Sports, it's Payne Weber College Basketball. We've got great regional action. Most of the country will see 19th-ranked Syracuse go out west to battle 15th-ranked UCLA. It is Payne Weber College Basketball continuing tomorrow on ABC. Yeah, that should be a great game, uh, Syracuse and UCLA. We talk about all the wins that all, all these great coaches have had. Jimmy Beheim, of course. Uh, so many wins has done a terrific job at Syracuse. So that should be an exciting game tomorrow. They live and die from the outside. Fresno State does not have a great inside presence. They have not shot the ball well yet, and that is why Utah is just knifing them apart. Tony Harvey gets his first field goal of the day. How many layups did they have in the first game, Mike? 24. Uh, and you know they're on pace to have another 24. I mean, <laughs> they're scoring near the goal almost every time down the floor. So Fresno State's going to have to make a few adjustments. 22 to 9. Porter can shoot it, but it's turned over again. Got to stop Andre Miller. Turn around and get a vision on the ball. Medela, bodied by Roberson, and that is three on Terrence Roberson, and that is a big problem amongst many for Fresno State here in the first half. distance to a college degree is a straight line called discipline. Do you know how to walk it? Be all you can be. Why do I have Aflac insurance on top of my regular health insurance? Because he has his mother's eyes. Because I still have to teach him to whistle. And because Aflac helps cover what other insurance doesn't. If I'm injured, Aflac even provides cash to help pay bills. So why do I have Aflac? Did I mention he has his mother's eyes? Aflac Supplemental Insurance. Without it, no insurance is complete. Reese's Nut Rageous. So loaded, you don't eat it, you survive it. No matter what you drive, import or domestic, Pep Boys has your battery. Get any ProStart 75-month battery from $39.99. ProStart, name brand quality battery starting at a low price of just $39.99. Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. That weight on your shoulders looks pretty heavy, son. 
It's taxes. Go on. Not just my taxes. I'm doing my sisters, my nephews. Everyone's getting married, having kids. I don't even know if I'm doing them right. Son, there have been over 800 tax law changes. Maybe they're expecting too much of you. Yeah. Hey, I don't think I got your name. h and Block. We know. Do you? On 2020 Monday, a passionate love affair, a gruesome murder. But who really did it? A real-life murder mystery that will keep you guessing to the end. 2020 Monday. Welcome back to Payne Weber College Basketball here on ABC. Next Saturday at 2 Eastern and Pacific, ABC Sports brings you the semifinal rounds of the World Golf Championships, Anderson Consulting, Match Play Championship, including David Duvall, Tiger Woods, Mark O'Mara, Ernie Els, Colin Montgomery, and Fred Couples, who will make it to Saturday's semifinals. Four hours of first-round coverage begins Wednesday on ESPN, and then over the weekend, next Sunday live here on ABC. Rick Majerus's team continuing to hit their free throws. Medela, when we were away, hit a couple. And now their run is 15 to 2 in the last three and a half minutes. Alexander off the screen. And a good follow by Larry Abney, and he is fouled. Nice job by Larry Abney. And that's what Larry Abney does for this team. He's a, an efficient rebounder inside, a guy that tries to rebound every time. And a good pass here. Alexander with the best. But look at Abney working. He's working. He's continually using his hands. He's trying to go to the glass to give this team a lift. And Abney has done that many times this year for Fresno State. Now they're going to pick up full court, try to cause some turnovers. But as we said at the top of the show, Utah attacks the press as well as anybody. Cullen misses the easy one. There were two guys down in a red jersey against one man in a white jersey, though. That press not very effective. Good look inside, and an easy one for Abney, and Rick Majerus wants a 20-second timeout. Yeah, well, what a pass by Chris Heron. Great look by Heron, and he's getting this team revitalized. He's looking inside. Rick Majerus not happy. His guys are losing vision. They're not taking vision on the ball and vision on their man, and Jerry Tarkanian hoping his team will now mount a bit of a comeback. Doing a great job against the press. A, a, a nice job in the full court for Utah. They're, they're, they're doing a great job in the open court, and they're able to get open court shots against the press. And what they're doing is they're looking to make the pass all the way down the side, and now you've got a two-on-one. So you get in this position here, and you get a two-on-one, and they dodge a bullet, but they did have very good positioning. Fresno State did not rotate. They didn't get in the press effectively. But Utah, normally a team that will make you pay in the open court. They made many teams pay one year ago in their run to the national championship game. Everyone who pressured them ended up going home. Kentucky didn't pressure them in the second half and wins the national title. And who can forget Utah's unbelievable win against Arizona in the finals of the West Regional? I mean, it shocked everybody. But this Utah team is, again, playing very well this year. They're on a great run. So unselfish, and an example of that that time by Medela over to Tony Harvey, who has five points. Alexander with a tough one, answers with the two-point field goal. Now, Courtney is able to generate his own offense. He has shown us that a couple of times already. That time, Eli reaches in and commits his first. Pardon me, they are going to give the personal to Courtney Alexander. That will be his first. Ten sixteen remaining in the first half of play. This man has made frequent trips to the line already. One of the top foreign players in the nation. Hano Medela, as I said earlier, leading the whack at 84% free throw shooting. And there are scouts in attendance to watch this young man play today, including the Lakers' Jerry West, who really likes Hano Medela's talents. Amongst others, <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> likes this young man's talents. Uh, still has another year, and of course, there's, there's Jerry West. Done such a fabulous job with the Lakers, and uh, one of the all-time great players ever to play this game. Alexander gives it up to Willie Farley. Pressure on Heron. 
the job by Utah, where they pressure the ball well. Nothing easy. And here's a guy, as you said, that can create his own shot. No, he picked up his dribble. Heron with seven on the shot clock, knifing his way in and rejected underneath by Nate Altoff. Miller the other way, defended by Courtney Alexander. Jensen to Medela. Utah so patient offensively. Looking to put the ball inside. Altoff trying to get position when Medela again is going to make this one. And another follow. Rebounding a key today and dominating the boards on both sides of the floor are the youths of Utah. Yeah, you think Jensen's not doing much at the end of the game. He's got 14 points, nine rebounds, and three assists. He does it every time. He's a quiet leader on this team. At 16 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists in the first meeting. And Heron does not like that call. Yeah, you got a five-second call. And Heron not happy with the call, but if you're closely guarded within six feet, then you either have to pick up your dribble or you have to make a positive move to the basket. And Chris Heron felt he wasn't guarded within that six feet distance, but the official did not agree. I don't like the rule. I don't know why you need a five second count when you have a 35 second shot clock. Nobody is trying to withhold the ball. I understand you play good defense and you try to come out in pressure, but I just don't think that's a rule we need in college basketball. Nonetheless, it goes against Jerry Tarkanian's team. Killian pressured by Alexander. And he steps out of bounds. Good defense by Courtney Alexander. 31-16, though. A 15-point deficit for the Bulldogs, who are trying to turn up their intensity now, Dan. And, and of all teams to try to come back on, Utah is a club. When they get ahead of you, they normally put you away. You look at the turnovers, 5-3, uh, to three, and, and that's a key statistic because Fresno State, Mike, has not been able to force turnovers against Utah in, in the same way that they do against most teams. Alexander dished it down nicely to Abney, fouled by Medela. That is his first. 16 fouls on the Utes, seven on the Bulldogs. Offense from Larry Abney is somewhat of a bonus. Yeah, absolute bonus. Now, Abney, a guy that normally uh, will get uh, six, seven shots and 10, 11 rebounds. Uh, that's, that's the kind of stats you want from Abney. And when he gives you production in terms of points, that, that is a tremendous bonus. And normally, his scores are all inside because he's a workhorse. He's got that work ethic around the basket. And uh, he's been productive so far in this game. you got to stop Miller here. You have to put a stop on him. Sharp gives it baseline. Saved, and Miller has it. Andre Miller, offensive foul. Heron takes the charge. Nice job by Chris Heron that time, and I thought a good call. Andre Miller, a little bit overzealous, trying to take the ball strong to the rim. And Chris Heron uh, really did a magnificent job of holding position. Heron anticipated. And you can move as long as your body's in front. You can be moving backwards on that situation. I thought the official made a good call. Boy, they need a trip here. Alexander on top. Oh, my goodness. Just inside the three-point line. 11 points for Courtney Alexander. And, and not many guys in the country can do what Courtney Alexander has showed you this afternoon. He can create his own shot from the guard spot almost every time down the floor. The crowd is vocal here at Selland Arena in Fresno. And I think they're, they're looking at Miller or Medela. Miller way short, an air ball. Three again. And Altoff goes up strong for the rebound. Miller in transition, and he misses. And a foul after the miss. Coming in after the play was freshman Adam Sharp. Normally, this Utah team will, will score in transition, and Andre Miller has missed a couple of shots that he normally puts home. And watch Sharp coming all the way from the backside on the miss. Sharp, a good call, will go over the back. Seventh team foul, so now not only does he make the foul, you stop the clock, you also give Fresno State an opportunity to get two points on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Fresno State is a team shooting 65% from the line this season. Courtney Alexander. The popular transfer from Virginia. Out of Durham, North Carolina. 
He has 12 points here in the first half. I mean, he has played big in big games. When he was at Virginia, scored 30 points back in 96 against Duke, 27 against North Carolina in the ACC tournament. He is not afraid to put the ball up. Yeah, he, he went through a few sh uh, shooting slumps early in the year, but uh, he has picked up his game, and you're right. He's got 13 already this afternoon. Fresno State trying to build some momentum here at home. So what'll it take for you to buy this car You're today? Buying this SUV today and I want you to drive out. I want of you here. to walk out of here with just me. for you. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk to my boss. My supervisor. Hey, we're gonna have a deal, right? Log on to autobytel.com. Arm yourself with dealer invoice and retail list prices. Choose any make, any model. No hassles, no haggling, low prices. Autobytel.com. We're changing the way America buys cars. Uh, I've known this guy five minutes. He's already giving me investment advice. For a recommendation on your portfolio, please press 3. I'm going to pay for this. What was I Should thinking? my 401k be all stock? Should my 401k be all cash? I didn't think right this last month. My portfolio should be overweighted in game companies. Got Why him. does this guy think what works for him? It's going to work for me. Thank you, Payne Weber. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Four. It's not for everyone, only you. What could this woman say to this woman about this man? What? To make her do this. All new to practice ABC Sunday. Welcome back to college basketball here on ABC Sports. Utah leads by 10 greatly because of the fact they have been able to do the job on the glass. Out rebounding Fresno State 15 to 7 and in the conference Utah number one in rebound margin and Fresno State Mike it has always had a very difficult time rebounding the basketball they cannot score around the goal that's been a problem for them and they're not an efficient rebounding team you look at look at the numbers 15 to 7 Utes so they've been able to control it inside it's the perimeter guard play of the dogs that's been able to keep them somewhat in this game and they're hanging on Miller underneath and a good block by Melvin Eli second block of the game he has set a single season record this year in that category 79 blocks now on the year this is a nice job of rotation by Eli and he does a good job of not fouling yet getting position and getting that block be alert here for Andre Miller it's man to man on the out of bounds he's taking it out see if they run him off a screen well, Heron did a good job to get to him. Heron on Miller. Miller under pressure. Tipped in by Nate Altoff. Well, he is coming on big. Altoff has just been improving dramatically. Heron goes down score. hard. Might have gone knee to knee with Metal Dan. Yeah, and, and, and here's a young man that's had ankle problems. He's had uh, food poisoning, had the flu. This has all happened in, in the last two or three weeks. So he's not 100% playing right now. As Mettola tries to get position here, and it was an inadvertent bump. Let's, let's hope Chris Heron is all right. No question, the heart and soul of this Fresno State team. Playing his last home game for Fresno State this afternoon. And well documented the trials and tribulations of this young man's life over the past couple of seasons the transfer from Boston College 
Chris Heron from Fall River, Massachusetts, now married, his wife Heather expecting a child, and Chris and Heather happily married, and he says that as much as anything has changed his perspective on life. Responsibility normally does. You got that right. So we wish you, Chris, uh, and I'm sure he has a he has a future at the next level. No, there's no question about that. I mean, he's a, he's a guy that will definitely be looked at by the NBA people, and I think has the ability to play on that level and effectively. Jensen off the screen gives it back up to Tony Harvey. Six and a half minutes remain here in the first half. Harvey for three. Melvin Eli, the rebound for Fresno State. Heron with six assists, just one turnover so far in the game this afternoon. Willie Farley. Alexander. Are you kidding me? I said he's not going to make that one. Now, that one's a little far from deep. I mean, he was almost falling out of bounds. Four dogs have pulled to within eight. Got the fans back in it. Yep. Miller defended by Heron. Blocking foul called on Chris. That is his second. Ninth team foul, so a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Metala out of the game, of course, for Utah. Fresno State, coincidentally, making a, a nice run with Hano not in the ball game. So I'm sure that uh, Rick Majerus will try to get him back soon, but a good effort so far by the dogs to get back in this game. They've done it with good perimeter shooting and good half-court defense. Demetrius Porter checks in for Chris Heron for Fresno. Jeremy Killian in the lineup for Utah, and Miller at the line. One and one. Shooting the one and one. 18 points, 14 boards, 13 assists last year in the West Regional Championship against Arizona. Rimmed in and out, but again an offensive rebound after a missed free throw. And again, Jensen. All he does is beat you. <laughs> Gets rebounds, scores, and look at him with the ball. He might get a double dribble. They did, and it is turned over. Five turnovers by each team, and a 20-second timeout is going to be taken by Fresno State. Big Monday on ESPN, a college basketball triple header at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Number two, UConn takes on Providence. Then at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 on the West Coast, Oklahoma State and Kansas. And at midnight, following a half-hour edition of SportsCenter, TCU battles UNLV. Big Monday begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. And UConn... They got pumped. Yep, they earlier got, today. Got beat today. This man just wants to be part of the madness of March. This man is getting used to being there. Utah, Kentucky, and Arizona. The only three teams in the nation to make it as far as the Sweet 16 the past three years. Ten years already for Rick Majerus at Utah. Yeah, that's unbelievable that Rick's been there uh, ten years. There have not been a great deal of coaches at Utah over the years. I mean, you go back to Jack Gardner and Bill Foster, Jerry Pinn, and Lynn Archibald, and the Rick Majerus, and that probably covers about a 50 or 60 years span. Farley lays it in. First points in the game for Willie Farley, and the Bulldogs as close as they have been in quite some time. Got to watch a five-second count here. Good job by Miller to pick it up. Well, they, they have uh, picked up the intensity at the defensive end. They just smothered BYU the other night for about a seven-minute span when they played with the intensity that they are displaying right here. Yeah, here's the difference. They're now starting to put more pressure on the ball. So all of a sudden, you pressure on the ball, and you cannot make that pass to the post as easily. Alexander, tough shot. This is just his second field goal of the game. Miller, all by himself. And a push off on Tony Harvey. And I thought a pretty good call. We had a good view. Harvey going for that rebound. Definitely used his left arm to move the man off. And now you get into another shooting situation. So Fresno State, an opportunity to stop the clock, get to the line, set up their press. You know, the one thing this Fresno State team has 
is a ton of athleticism. What they don't have is a strong inside presence like Jerry Tarkanian had in many of his 19 seasons in the desert. Well, the other thing that's happening this afternoon, Mike, is that Fresno State doing a good job shooting the free throws, and free throws have been a major problem for this club. But uh, so far in the first half, they've been very effective at the line. And that's one thing you have to do. That can mount the comeback as you look at the numbers on Farley. And he has been spectacular of late. He has put up big numbers shooting the tray. Now the press. 13-4 Fresno State run. Under five minutes remains in the first half. Utah breaks it down. Now they'll work it in the half court. Alexander all over Andre Miller. He spins. Three on two. Give it up here. Oh, Four okay. minutes. Okay. For three. And a follow by Melvin Eli. How do you like it? Let's get Melvin Eli to trail it. To knock it down. Fresno State on a run. Closing it to two. How do you like them dogs? 22nd timeout by Rick Majerus. Well, we, we thought if Fresno State could use their athleticism, shoot it on the outside, and run the court. How about Melvin Eli? You gotta love his work ethic. Here, here's a young man that never gives you any problems. He rebounds the ball. This is actually a good kick out on the penetration by Demetrius Porter, but no block out, and very difficult to block him out. He was running the lane and right place at the right time, and Melvin Eli gets a big finish, and the Bulldogs have closed it to two. And the press again. I get a try. Oh my, Fresno State on a 15-2 run. Seven turnovers now by Utah. And, and I'm a little surprised that Hano Metala has been out as long as he has. I thought Metala might get back in there. Of course, he does have the two fouls. And, and if you're Rick Majerus, you don't want Hano to get that third foul in the first half. So that, I'm sure, is the thinking. But with the run that the dogs have put on, I thought he might get Metala back in. Alexander. No, he can't make that one. I don't think. He almost did. He almost made one of the toughest shots of his afternoon. He says he was pushed off. But they'll come back the other way as the foul goes underneath against the Bulldogs. Larry Abney picks up his second. I think that shot got Coach Tarkanian's attention in a hurry. <laughs> he said, wait, what, what was that? And uh, Courtney Alexander said he was pushed. <laughs> he said, okay. Let's be a little bit more patient the next time down the floor. Courtney came out and made six of his first seven shots. That's good and bad. It's great the fact that he's burying them. It's bad because then he thinks he can make every one. No, well, and, and you know that's not all, that's not uh, that's not all bad either because uh, <laughs> a, a guy like uh, Courtney Alexander has the talent, and you alluded to it at the big numbers he put up when he was in Virginia. He's had some big numbers also here at Fresno State that he can put a hurt on you right away. I mean, he's capable of going for 30 points or better in any game. Jensen gets them both. He has six. It's a four-point game. Utah 21 and four overall. Fresno State 18 and nine. Heron and the blocking foul is called. No. Offensive, a push by Chris Heron. I thought Heron would read that situation a little bit better. There was a switch. Andre Miller was defending Abney. Heron had a big player on him. He tried to use his dribble. Instead, he uh, committed the foul. And he picks up his third. But the Bulldogs are back in it here at home. So, what will it take for you to buy this car You're today? You're buying this SUV today or not? I want you to drive out I want here. you to walk out of here with Just for you, I got to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to my boss. my supervisor. Hey, we're going to have a deal, right? Log on to autobuytel.com. Arm yourself with dealer invoice and retail list prices. Choose any make, any model. No hassles, no haggling, low prices. Autobuytel.com. We're changing the way America buys cars. Nothing tops ice cream better than Hershey's chocolate syrup. 
So feel free to pour it on. But do watch out for those cherries. What you don't get with cut-rate car insurance is a state farm agent to turn to when you need help. I'm lonely. So if you get into an accident, I'm Mr. Lonely. you could end up feeling Wish I had someone very much alone. To call on don't want to feel all alone? Go with the good neighbor service you get with a state farm agent. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. At Pep Boys, get four of our 35,000-mile tires at a low $99. Or double your mileage with four 70,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires, just $169. Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Budweiser. Now is the perfect time to enjoy a fresh, cold, Beechwood-aged Budweiser. Toyota Trucks, with you for the long haul. Arthur Anderson, helping in ways you never imagined. And Autobitel.com, we're changing the way America buys cars. Welcome back to Fresno, California. Payne Weber, college basketball here on ABC Sports. 35-31, Utah leads Chris Heron with three personal fouls. Mike Goldberg along with Dan Belwamini. Happy you are with us this afternoon. A good showdown in the WAC and an imperative showdown for Fresno State. They've been to the NIT in the first three years with Jerry Tarkanian as the head coach. Jerry came back for one reason, Dan. That was to get his alma mater back in the big dance. Yeah, and I think the biggest game that Jerry's had uh, since uh, uh, assuming the coaching responsibilities here at Fresno State, because I think they win today and they will be in the tournament. They finish on the road. They have games against San Diego State and at Hawaii, I think two winnable games. They win 10 games in the WAC and, and they're in. So obviously they know it. They're playing hard and Utah team 16 in a row, not easy to defeat. Farley with the rebound after Adam Sharp missed his shot. Demetrius Porter at the point now with Heron sitting down with the three personals. Watch a five second count here. Now there's the spacing. They're saying the defender Miller was not six feet. Alexander, mismatch with Killian and he takes advantage of it. Now Courtney's having a scintillating game this afternoon. I mean, he has been superb in all areas. Now he's going to the goal, shooting it on the outside. He's had an unbelievable half for Fresno State. Look at Jensen gives it back up. Miller is fouled by Melvin Eli. And for big Melvin, that is his first. Just a reminder coming up at halftime, the autobytel.com halftime report with John Saunders and Digger Phelps, and those guys have a lot to talk about at the half of this afternoon's game. Well, Andre Miller's had a tough afternoon so far. I mean, he's a, he's a prolific scorer. He, he's, a, he's a guy that runs this team efficiently, but he's been well defended, and he's not had a very good afternoon from the line so far. Three of six with that made shot. Miller with eight points so far. Tarkanian wants to talk about it. 22nd timeout. I think Jerry Tarkanian senses this is a very big trip down the court for his team. Chris Heron with the three fouls out of the game. Terrence Roberson with two fouls not in the game. So now all of a sudden you've taken quite a bit of your perimeter scoring and leadership. So he wants to talk to Demetrius Porter. I think he's going to going to use Courtney Alexander Mike as the focal point of his next trip down the floor and I think Alexander will be the recipient of the ball and they'll try to set up a play for him. I think Chris Heron's talking about the foul. He's probably saying why why do I have three fouls. I, I don't get it. Andre with five he came in 24 points shy of Michael Doliak's numbers 
which would put him 11th on the all time Utah scoring chart. Got the extra year as a non qualifier for graduating in four years. And it's interesting you say that about Andre Miller because it appears that Terrence Roberson, who's been on the bench a long time here in the first half with three fouls for Fresno State, is going to attempt to do the same thing. Yeah, he, uh, uh, Terrence Roberson's on track to graduate, and he'll get back that year he lost as a uh, as a non-qualifier, so or a partial qualifier, so that's, that's good news for Fresno State. Courtney Alexander making the tough shots. 20 points in the first half for Courtney. And, and what about that timeout? Excellent 22nd timeout by Jerry Tarkanian. Did a nice job to set up Alexander for the score. Jensen, too strong. And the foul is called against Utah, and Fresno State can take the lead for the first time since the very start of this basketball game at the line. And this does not happen very often. That is a Utah team that loses a big lead. But you really give a salute to Fresno State. They played great defense. Here's the post up on Alexander. He has good momentum. He's in rhythm. Very difficult fadeaway. But that's the kind of half that Courtney Alexander has displayed. He's put on quite a show so far. Cullen checks in. Now the other thing this points out, Mike, is that obviously this Utah team sorely misses Metzola when not in the game. Metzola yeah. with the two fouls and will not come back. And you look at that free throw graphic and uh, Fresno State shooting it now. Now they're getting back to where they've been the whole year. They're back in the 50s. They're shooting a little bit better at the start of the half. Miller coast to coast himself. And Abney came down on his backside. Saw the explosiveness there of Andre Miller. This is just a, a, a solid transition, breaking that defense down by Andre Miller. The other thing you notice, he didn't travel. Very smart inside to keep the pivot foot down, to use the fake, to get his defender in the air. And once you're in the air defensively, it's pretty hard to defend anybody. And then to go ahead and take it up in traffic and draw the foul. Randy Holcomb checks in. And Larry Abney sits down with three personal fouls. Both teams in the double bonus with 2-10 remaining here in the first half of play. From Los Angeles, California, Andre Miller has missed four free throws uncharacteristically so far in the contest. Well, we talked about Rick Majerus' concern about his free throw, team free throw shoot. Right. Sharp fouls on Alexander. Yeah, well, Rick really feels that, that that's a perplexing area of, of, of a team if you can say there's anything wrong with a club that's won 16 in a row. But he said, I sure wish we'd shoot our free throws uh, a lot more uh, proficiently than we have. I mean, we're normally in the top five, seven in the country, but this year, inexplicably, they're shooting it at, uh, in the 60s. If Courtney makes this free throw, we will have a tie game. Utah led by 14, 31 to 17, with eight and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. If Courtney's had a better half in his career than this half, I'd love to see it. I mean, he has been absolutely sensational in the first half. They are on their feet again here at Selland Arena. Sellout crowd for the last home game. Cullen, a long three. No, that'll quiet you. He's not bad from out there. No, he's four percent on the season. No, Cullen, uh, not bashful, makes a very uh, courageous shot. Does a nice job to get that goal and in, in, uh, face it up. Alexander wisely gives it up. Demetrius Porter baseline, and it falls. First two of the afternoon for Demetrius Porter. He is known more for his ability to shoot from the outside. Just over a minute remains. Miller and an offensive rebound. And guess who? Cullen again. All Cullen does is make threes and rebound. When well, he's being guarded by Porter. And a foul one more time. Little surprise that Utah didn't recognize. They had a mismatch with Demetrius Porter. Ended up on Phil Cullen. Cullen had about a six, seven-inch height advantage. I thought he might try to post up. 
Instead, Andre Miller gets back to the line, and this has been an adventure all afternoon for Andre. Out of Verbum Day High School in Los Angeles, one of the storied high school basketball programs in the Los Angeles area for many, many years. Well, before the afternoon's over, Andre Miller will have his 15 points, eight assists, six rebounds, and three steals. Always <laughs> I mean, does, you, doesn't he? You know that will happen. Yep, always does. He is going to go very high in the NBA draft. A lot of the scouts here to watch him again today, and they are always impressed with the versatility and well-roundedness of that. Courtney. My goodness, Courtney Alexander. How do you like it, Jerry? Jerry said, you know what? Not bad. He's only... What's he got, 24? <laughs> Courtney Alexander with a spectacular first half of play. Miller gives it up. Stolen by Willie Farley. Shot clock is off. Right, what great defense by Farley to rotate over. See if he can find Alexander again. Why not? They're looking for him, but you can't get him the ball. Holcomb. Tried to get it to him. Now Miller. Last shot. A three. And he gets it at the buzzer. Andre Miller with a big basket at the buzzer. 11 points in the first half. And Utah goes into the locker room with a three-point lead. Good first half of basketball. Let's go back to New York. Our ABC studios. John Saunders. Digger Phelps. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And you can see why Rick Majerus has won 16 in a row. <laughs> it's Miller time. Give him the ball. He'll get it done. Slow first half for Andre Miller. But as you saw at the end of the half, he'll take this game over in the second half. But Fresno playing tough. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at UConn against Miami. A huge game in the Big East. Arizona right now leading Oregon 66-61. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Do rich people have more friends than the rest of us? Are they more deserving of a comfortable seat? Are they more entitled to break safely on a rainy day? Are we the only car company that doesn't think so? Century by Buick. Full of amenities for under 20000 And right now, Century is an even better value. Come in today and get $750 cash back on every new 99. Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. My dad wouldn't have called this retirement. I mean, who would have thought? When did I get to retire from managing my money? Now that I have no trustees. seven grandkids. Kind of funny how investing was easier when I didn't have any money. Titanium bikes are overrated. I always thought earning money was the hard part. Keeping it's the real job. Mm. I wonder, should we take the income? Should we reinvest? Thank you, Payne Weber. They were America's sweethearts. You nervous? She had the voice. Nah. He had the vision. Me either. And the beat goes on. But behind all the money and fame, their lives were falling apart. Why are you destroying Sonny and Cher? Because I don't want to be Sonny and Cher anymore. An ABC original, And the Beat Goes On. Monday, 9, 8 central. Start with the top 64 golfers in the world and end with one. The Anderson Consulting Match Play Championship. One bad round in your history. Next Saturday at 2 on ABC.
Welcome to the AutoVitel.com Halftime Report, brought to you by AutoVitel.com. Changing the way America buys cars. Here now, John Saunders and Digger Phelps. 45 to 42, Utah with the lead over Fresno State. Should be a great second half. Let's get to the scores and highlights. And Miami on the road, but that's easy for them. Seven and one on the road in the Big East. At UConn, though, they've never won there. Mario Bland knocks down the jumper. UConn was down by eight, but of course they would fight back in this game. And Khalid Elamine with one chance here. Loses his footing, throws up the prayer, not answered. And Miami wins at UConn for the first time in their history. Well, Key was in the second half. Jake Bosco gets his third foul with 18 plus to go. Miami goes on an eight zip run, ties it at 43. And then, of course, Utah, I mean, uh, Connecticut shooting seven for 44, shooting threes the last three games. Their perimeter game is lost. Their legs are out, and I just think they're tired. St. John's in Miami now just a game back of UConn with two to play. Kentucky and Arkansas. Kentucky, it's kind of been one of those seasons where you're not sure what to expect. And there's Chris Jeffries with the dunk, Arkansas with the lead, and then Chris Walker knocked him down to three. And this time you expect that Kentucky comes up with the loss. They do 74 to 70 the final there. Reed with 17 and seven rebounds. Well, Arkansas got focused coming off that road loss at Florida this past week. And when you take a look at what they bring to the table right now, beating Kentucky to me feels that they have got an at-large berth from the Southeastern Conference. They have Auburn home this week, but Kentucky still sliding. Never knows what's going to happen when you look at the Wildcats. How about at large in the ACC? They may only get three teams in. We know Duke is in trying to become the first team to go 15 and 0 in the ACC. Trajan Langdon, his final game at Cameron, and he goes out the way he started. Bombs away with the three pointers. That was an early tie. Then Elton Brand, you cannot stop this guy down there. Off the glass, it's good. And Duke rolls easily 92 to 65. Brand with 22 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, look at her defense. They force Clemson into 26 turnovers, which leads to 34 Duke points. Solid defense leads the great offense. In the Big East, Georgetown and St. John's. It was a great matchup the first time around. And Mike Jarvis worries about the rebounding. Trey Kilpatrick, circus shot here, kind of turns, twists, throws it up off the glass. Plus, he gets fouled. Georgetown within four. They did have the lead, but then Eric Barkley to Bootsy Thornton to Tyrone Grant. Imagine if they had Grant in the games against Duke, in the games against Connecticut. St. John's might have won those games. You got that right. When you look at Georgetown, though, they came out in the second half, went on a 10 zip run to take the lead 35 34. Then Tyrone Grant plays big, gets four big offensive rebounds, scores, gets the points. St. John's pulls up, but I think Georgetown's going to surprise people in the Big East tournament. All right, North Carolina against Virginia. Carolina started this game on a 15 0 run. Ed Cota with the drive left handed with six zip at that point. Ronald Curry. Well, he's a quarterback and Virginia native. They don't like him down there anymore. Said he was going there 11 nothing at that point. But Virginia then goes on a run of their own 33 to 20. Adam Hall with the layup. And yes, they tied the game down only two at halftime. Well, Virginia, part of that run was 17 to four, where they hit four three pointers. And Pete Gillen has his team fired up and a crowd fired up. This will be a tough second half as we get into what Carolina needs to do to win. Penn State against Purdue. What a weird year it's been for Purdue. Carson Cunningham. To Jaron Cornell, three-point shot is up and it's good. Purdue is down by one. Then Calvin Booth with a nice pass to G. Ossie Klein heard, and he gets the easy deuce. And guess what? Penn State knocks off Purdue. Gene Cady has to be concerned about this going into the tournament. He sure is. And when you take a look at Penn State, they've had a lot of tough losses. As we saw the overtime loss to Indiana, the buzzer shot by Mateen Cleaves of Michigan State. They were due to beat somebody, and they beat Purdue today on the road. In the Pac-10, Oregon State and Arizona State right now, a huge lead for the Sun Devils, 41-23. to Stick around. More scores and highlights coming up right now. Andre Miller with this three-pointer at the end of the half, the three-point lead. Imagine one shot for one million dollars. Well, it's coming March 6th during halftime of the UCLA Arizona game. The nutrageous million dollar shot. Don't miss it. Reese's nutrageous. So loaded, you don't eat it, you survive it. Folks, your colonel's shaking things up with my new extra crispy chicken. I double dip and <laughs> double bread it so it's double crunchy. It's new and whew, tied down the furniture. Right now, get eight pieces plus six of my honey barbecue wings, just $9.99. That price ain't gonna last, so shake a leg. 
Hold on, I said just a leg. At KFC, we do chicken right. And it's right crunchy, too. Let's see. College in four years, costs up 40% over the next five. Somebody do the math here. It'd be great Please if our money would grow as fast as these kids. I can't believe it. Will paying for college be as painful as this? Let's get ready. Hey, that kid just dropped a pretzel? Because I like pretzels. I really Glenn like will pretzels. be able to help with our education. I wonder if we should have put that money in a trust. Maybe we would have... I hope she was kidding about college in Hawaii. Thank you, Payne Weber. So, what'll it take for you to buy this car today? You're buying this SUV today or not? I want you to drive out I want you to walk out of here with... Just for you, I gotta... Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk to my boss. with my supervisor. Hey, we're gonna have a deal, right? Log on to autobytel.com. Arm yourself with dealer invoice and retail list prices. Choose any make, any model. No hassles, no haggling, no prices. Autobytel.com. We're changing the way America buys cars. Green Buddies, I got some bad news. Good. Uh, we got canned. They want us off the rocks by the end of the day. What did you just say? Canned? Who got canned? Okay, freeze the swamp. You guys can talk? Of course we can talk, you bonehead. What does can mean? But all you said was button. and er. We were reading from the script. You should try it sometime. What does can mean? No, don't be uh, fired. Can means fired? I can't breathe. Gonna get sick? Wait, no, don't get sick. Getting sick? Put your head between your legs. Someone get him a bucket. Now, how is that supposed to sell beer? They're not skating for the judges. They're not skating for the medals. They're skating for the fans. The Chevrolet Skating Spectacular, tomorrow at 1.30 on ABC. Get your bell bottoms and platform shoes on. It's ABC's Flashback Weekend. Oh, Alice. America's favorite family is in for a shocker. I'm looking for Carol Brady. I'm her husband. And I need some advice. Put yourself up for adoption. A very Brady sequel tonight at 8, 7 central, part of ABC's Flashback Weekend. This is the Autobytel.com Halftime Report. John Saunders alongside Digger Phelps. Great race in the Big Ten this year. Ohio State extremely hot. They won five in a row, seven of their last eight, facing Northwestern today. Steve Lepore for the Wildcats knocks down a three. They take their first lead of the game, but too much. Scooney Penn comes up with a steal here. Remember, he came over with Jim O'Brien from Boston College. Gets the layup, and Jim O'Brien picks up another victory in the conference to go to 11-3. And, and Evan Eschmeyer of Northwestern just 10 points today. Goes three for five today. Today and the other night in a home loss against Illinois, he only had one field goal the last 17 minutes of that game. Northwestern today, 26 turnovers. They're fading out of the possibility of an NCAA bid. College of Charleston, 16-0 in the Southern Conference, just the third team to go unbeaten in conference play. John Crest knows his team has a great chance to be in the Sweet 16. Don't want to play this team in the first round. Xavier against UMass, they've been struggling this year. Monty Mack with the miss. And Larry Kettner, where have you been all season? Knocks that one in, one point lead. Then Gary Lumpkin with the drive. James Posey with the follow. But guess what? Time had expired. Take a look at the light. Before he even gets his mitts on it, it's gone. And UMass pulls off the ups at 78-77. UMass defense solid, holding Xavier to 36% shooting in the field. But yes, Larry Kettner, 20 points, 12 rebounds. He's back. Oklahoma State blows out Missouri 84 to 68. Adrian Peterson with 20 points and eight rebounds. And Temple knocks off George Washington surprisingly in easy fashion 72 to 56 in the final. Mark Karcher with a double double 18 points and 10 rebounds. Don't forget tomorrow at 3:30 Eastern time. Payne Weber College basketball regional action. Most of you will see Syracuse against UCLA. Very important matchup for both teams. The rest will either see Tulane and NC State or Louisville against Cincinnati. Also tomorrow pregame and halftime. Auburn and head coach Cliff Ellis. What a great job he has done. Number three in the country. He'll join us in the studio. The Autobytel.com halftime report has been brought to you by Autobytel.com. Changing the way America buys cars. We'll return with the second half after this message and a word from our ABC station. It started as a vacation, grew into a passion, and eventually led to a career. But you had your challenges along the way, like keeping an international organization focused and motivated, or structuring the acquisition of a key competitor. At Arthur Anderson, we help people make those kinds of decisions, and that helps them focus on whatever it is that got them wherever they are. Arthur Anderson, helping in ways you never imagined. Tests have shown that some brake pads can take more than 20 feet longer to stop a car. 
An independent lab developed D3EA, the only lab test which determines if brake pads are consistent with federal safety standards. Raybestos professional grade brakes are D3EA certified. What was 20 feet from you after your last sudden stop? So demand Raybestos and look for this seal. Raybestos, the best in brakes. It was good. It's the ABC Flashback Weekend. Richard Dreyfus is a teacher. Nobody could teach these children. Left, right, left. Whose life beats to a different drum. Little too fast, a little too erratic. Oh! What have we learned from this? The network television premiere. Congratulations, you found the beat. Mr. Holland's Opus, Sunday at 7, 6 Central, on ABC's Flashback Weekend. Pep Boys celebrates the 31st year of the Naismith Awards. This week's nominee is Elton Brand of Top Rank Duke. Only a sophomore, Brand is also a candidate for the Wooden Award. Brand suffered a broken bone in his left foot last season, then returned as the team's third leading scorer and led the team in rebounding. This season, Brand leads the Blue Devils in scoring, rebounding, and block shots. Elton Brand is the Pep Boys Naismith nominee of the week. Welcome back live to Fresno, California, Selland Arena, Utah leading 45-42 here at our half. It's Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC Sports. Mike Goldberg alongside Dan Balwamini. And Dan, you and I both thought that Fresno State was in some trouble 14 points down. Well, you thought right. They, they were in big trouble, but Courtney Alexander was the guy that really brought them back and uh, did a great job, did a nice job of playing good defense. And, and here's Courtney. So Courtney's numbers were unbelievable in the first half. If he's had a better first half of basketball in his career, I'd love to see it because Courtney had 25 points in the first half, did not miss any threes. And, and you look at what he has done in terms of bulk of offense for his team. The rest of the club, 6 of 16. Courtney, 9 of 12 and has not missed beyond the arc. The only thing Fresno State did poorly, I thought, at the end of that half was they didn't manage to clock. Here is, here is Demetrius Porter with the ball, and he is going to penetrate all the way down in here and give the ball off to Holcomb. Why he does that with the clock winding down is beyond me, because what he has to do in this situation, let's roll it ahead forward, is let's look for the hot guy. Now, Porter should bring the ball out. Here's the guy you want to look for right here, Courtney Alexander. Porter then kicks the ball back out to a guy really that cannot create a shot off the dribble and instead turns the ball over. And Andre Miller is going to be the beneficiary of the turnover. And Miller will bring it all the way down the floor and end up the half shooting a three-point goal. So this is like a massive turnaround for the dogs. Fresno State was in position to take the lead. Instead, they're down three. Not good clock management at the end of the first half. Now it's time for the Reese's Nut Rageous halftime stats. And free throw shooting a difference as Utah got to the line more often and did a great job on the boards. 
with an eight rebound advantage in the first half of play. Again, Utah the road team in the red uniforms and the white home jerseys worn today by Fresno State. This their last home game of the season. Utah will close their regular season at home in Salt Lake City. Medela back in the game played only 12 minutes in the first half. And looked like he may have tweaked his ankle. Mike coming down the foot. Metele is definitely in some pain. He, he is just limping around. He cannot move very well. How about Roberson that? gets his first. Terrence Roberson, Chris Heron had a combined one point in the first half. It's a good start for Roberson. And keep in mind, he was also on the bench for many minutes with the three personal fouls. Roberson finger rolled it from about six feet. I like that little, little lean in finger roll from about five. Of course, Heron with the fouls. Jensen off the curl. Utah basketball 101. And I think what Utah will do offensively, and Heron's going to let one go from deep, he has still been really in a big, big slump. I think Utah's going to focus in on Chris Heron. Now he's guarding Andre Miller. Miller's very smart. He's going to use his dribble, take it to the goal, and try to pick up that fourth foul on Chris Heron. See if they can maneuver the ball back out to Andre Miller and let him go. Second unit of Fresno State did a great job in the first half. Roberson Heron on the bench occasionally. This time, Courtney Alexander turns it over. Jensen all the way down the floor and the foul. And Eli got an elbow in the eye. Yeah, we have seen that before with the Utes. They are magnificent in the midcourt area of advancing the ball with a pass. And young people can learn from this. The easiest way to get the ball from one end of the floor to the other is not to dribble it, is to pass it. So if you find someone open ahead of you, give them the basketball and let them finish. Again, Jensen at the end of the pass, and he's a young man that loves to run the court, and he's a guy that will finish plays. There he is again. Look at Jim. We don't even notice he's in the game, and he's going to end up with like 16 points and 10 rebounds before it's over. Alex Jensen from Centerville, Utah, with 11 points. Larry Abney checks back in the game. Larry had some offensive production in the first half of play. Willie Farley, number three, will sit down. Jensen, Miller, Medela, Tony Harvey. Four very, very good ones for Utah. Alexander outstanding so far. Heron tried to get it to Eli and he stepped on the baseline and turned it over. Chris gave up an opportunity to shoot the basketball there. Well lacks confidence now in his outside touch so he's not in rhythm from the perimeter instead he's going to try to break it down and take it to the goal. And Rick Majerus likes the start and, and one thing Rick does I mean he's a great teacher of the game and he had guys like Doliak that came here that were not highly touted out of high school right even Keith Van Horn Van Horn was recruited hard but Van Horn was not thought about as the elite player coming out of high school it's the coaching it's the tutelage of Rick Majerus that really made these players better same with Metzala same with Andre Miller these are not like high school superstars coming into this program Miller with the fadeaway long rebound Roberson able to bring it in Chris Heron, one for 16 from the field in his last three games played. Not much better tonight. Missed three-pointer by Terrence Roberson, who led the nation from beyond the arc as a sophomore a couple of years ago. Now, I'm a little surprised they haven't gone to Andre Miller. Oh, Killian's going to let one go. Killian able to bury it. First three-pointer of the day for Jeremy Killian. Takes a lot of shots from outside and a deficit very quickly here for Utah, and it is turned over by Chris Heron. Yeah, if you need a timeout, boy, Utah has come out focused, haven't they? You put a run, and I really think the last 13 seconds of that first half, poor clock management by Fresno State has carried over to the second half. And Utah got a big lift when Andre Miller made the three at the end of the half, and they have picked up right where they've left off. Look at the pass ahead. Let's make the pass down the floor. Let's hit the open guy, and let's let Killian, who just made a three, gets in front of the defense and scores. you got to retrace your steps. You cannot allow this Utah team to get easy scores. Now, partner, how about our AFLAC trivia question for this afternoon? Which two current schools in the WAC have won an NCAA basketball championship? One's a little bit more obvious than the other. 
that's that's the again, that's the hint in this one. It's actually a very good question. Do you know the answer? No, he doesn't. I, I do because they told me earlier. Oh, they, oh well, that's that's not fair. <laughs> it's a good question, though. It is indeed. Boy, not coming out of a timeout. I mean, how important is this? Now you're facing that 11-point deficit. Try to get productive, run some offense, and boy, look, look at uh, Jensen do the job defensively and Courtney Alexander. I mean, he can't have anywhere near the kind of second half as he did the first, I don't think. Eli unable to save it. The pass from Courtney Alexander. He had to give it up, greatly due to the defensive presence of Jensen that you spoke yeah, of. And Jensen uh, just doing a job at both ends of the floor. He is dedicating himself in this half to try to play Courtney Alexander hard without the ball. If you, if you can eliminate his touches, obviously you can cut down the scoring. Tony Harvey now in the contest for Utah. And stolen by Larry Abney, who has been very active during his minutes today. Alexander picked up by Jensen again. Eli against Altoff. And big Melvin able to get the little hook shot to go. Well, that's, that's a move there that you would love to see Eli really improve upon and be efficient in the low post area. Gives his team a real lift when he can score around the goal. Good offense. Play without the ball. Cut without the ball. Be moving without the ball, and you will be rewarded. Heron himself now pulls it back. Medela helped out defensively. Chris Heron to Abney from 18. Utah had great position to bring in the rebound, but they couldn't handle the rock. Timeout on the floor, 15-36 remains in the contest. Utah able to get a jump here again in the beginning of the second half. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one. A good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sport Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Pizza Hut dared anyone to find a better pizza. Oh, really? Papa John took the challenge and won in independent taste tests. One big time. That's not surprising. After all, we were named best pizza chain two years in a row. Anybody can claim to make a better pizza, but it's you, the consumer, who've decided. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Try our Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of up to five toppings for just $10.99. Step up. Learn to see farther. Learn there are teachers who won't allow you to fail. Learn to dance, to draw. Learn that the real challenge doesn't come from the outside, but from within. And that there's more to you than you ever knew. Be all you can be. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC Sports. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Arthur Anderson, helping in ways you never imagined. The new Regal GS by Buick, official car of the Supercharged family. And Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. Welcome back to Payne Weber College Basketball here on ABC Sports. What do you have to do if you're Utah in the second half? Corral Courtney Alexander. And this is just great defense by, by Jensen. Look at him play Alexander without the ball. He's not too concerned with anything except keeping the ball away from Courtney Alexander. Force someone else to beat you in the second half, and that's great defense by Alex Jensen, and it did cause a turnover. That's what's going on in the second half defensively for the running Utes. Terrence Roberson. 
Four points all in the second half for Terrence. If he can heat up, that is more of the expected balanced attack that Fresno State has been successful with this year. Obviously, somebody has to heat up besides Alexander. He needs some help. All top couldn't handle the pass initially. Recovers nicely, gets the shot away too strong, and Jensen fights for the rebound. Didn't he do a great job of continuing his dribble while he was getting up? Had he not done that, it would have been traveling. Tony Harvey now defended tightly. And the foul is called on Chris Heron, and that is bad news. Fourth personal foul committed by Chris Heron. And it's not an accident that Chris Heron is defending the ball because whomever has the ball is using his dribble, trying to force Heron to pick up that fourth foul. Now Heron, with four fouls, comes out of the game. And, you know, Demetrius Porter, I thought, was very effective in the first half. It's a big loss. But again, Harvey, very smart. He knows the situation. The guy guarding him has fouls. Use your dribble. Nice look outside. Metal is short. Miller tried for the rebound. Jensen picks up the garbage. 13 points now for Alex Jensen. And the lead is double digits once again for the Utah Utes. Yeah, but what I think Fresno State, Mike, has to do at the defensive end is rebound all five players. You can't leak out early against Utah. You can't put Demetrius Porter as your only rebounder at the defensive end along with Eli. You've got to get your guards back. Roberson has to come back. They have to rebound every player because every rebound's significant. Utah's going to put them right back in. Tough shot from the baseline by Courtney Alexander. Demetrius Porter, number five, a man we should keep an eye on. He'll play most of the second half now with Heron on the bench with four fouls. He was four for six from three-point land on Thursday night against BYU. He's the hotter shooter of the two. Yes, he is. Very hard-working young man. I mean, he, he will be productive. Now, he can knock down the open shot. He's got a tough assignment guarding Miller. Ten to shoot. Medela leans in. And the foul is called. And that is three on Melvin Eli. And that's what that's what uh, Hano Metzala brings to the table. He's a big guy who can step away from the goal and use his dribble and be effective. And I thought Eli moved his feet and had decent position, but he did foul right there. Now, that was a good call, a little pump fake, and there was some body contact. But what a different team this uh, Utah club is with Hano Metzala in the game. When he came out in the first half, he only played 12 minutes. When he came out, that's when Fresno State was able to make their run. Well, Tark has done that with more than one player today. Keep them in the basketball game with multiple fouls. Well, I think you're forced to now in this situation because you're down and you're looking at an 11-point deficit. I mean, there's no sense saving guys at this point. They got down early in the first half, down by 14, in fact. And now they've dug themselves a hole again as Fresno State playing the most important game of their college basketball season here on ABC. Biggest, Colin checks in. Yeah, bi biggest game for, I think, uh, Coach Starkanian since he's uh, assumed the coaching responsibilities here at Fresno State. A win, I think, gets him in the NCAA tournament. They finish on the road at Hawaii. A game they can definitely win, and at San Diego State. I mean, those, those clubs can, can beat you, but I think Fresno State would have the momentum. This is a huge game for them. Another tough shot by Alexander. That time he missed. Utah can push it to 13. Farley commits the foul. One thing that's happening here in the first couple of minutes of the second half, team fouls are adding up quickly. Utah is going to have some time at the line. Remember the question, our AFLAC trivia question, which two current schools in the WAC have won an NCAA basketball championship? UNLV with Larry Johnson and crew, coached by Jerry Tarkanian, and Texas Western, now UTEP. Yeah, Texas Western with uh, Willie Cager and Bobby Joe Hill and the great team back in the 60s, Dave Big Daddy Latin. So, uh, same guy coaching today. The Bear, Ron Haskins. Tried to steal, picked away by Jensen. Given to Miller. Crowd wanted a traveling violation call. Talk about one of the great coaches of all time, Don Haskins, and what a special time it was when UTEP, uh, two coaches with 700 wins, an NCAA championship under their belt, met here 
It was an unbelievable game, and Don Haskins has been a real credit to the game of basketball. Too strong by Jensen. Offensive rebound by Utah. It's a very exclusive club. The coaches with 700 career victories. The only one that Tarkanian is worried about now, though, is the one that his team can earn today. And they've been empty the last two or three times down the floor. And that's what Utah can do to you. They put multiple stops at the defensive end, and they're methodical at the offensive end. They make it a moving screen. And it may be on Altoff. And anytime you set screens away from the ball, it's imperative that you are stationary. Anytime you're moving and the defender makes contact, the foul is on the screener. Second on Nate. Melvin Eli sits down for Fresno State. It's interesting you said that. Most teams will just go on runs, and it'll be very impressive and pretty. But as you mentioned, Utah builds a lead because they stop you, they get a two. They stop you again, they might hit a three. And they stop you, they stop you, and they score, they score. Yeah, and you don't notice it, uh, but all of a sudden, they've stopped you three or four times, and they've scored twice, and now you're down about six, seven points, and it starts building. There he is again, buddy. He's starting to heat up. Four three-pointers on the Let's team. See. He's only got 30. Just 30 He's points. got 30. He's got 30, and there's still 12 minutes to go. Back down to eight. Abney, good defense on Medela, but Miller broke open, and he is fouled by Alexander. Again, very intelligent half-court basketball. Andre Miller has a size advantage. The man guarding him, Demetrius Porter, is about three inches shorter. So they do a great job of lobbing over the top. And you notice, where is the weak side help? There's no help. The help comes late. And Andre Miller does a very effective job. And we talked about it. He can play the post. He can direct from the point. He, he can excel shooting from about 15 to 17 feet. He can defend well. And an excellent rebounder. And as you said, always gets his points. All of a sudden, he is heating up. Pizza Hut dared anyone to find a better pizza. Oh, really? Papa John took the challenge and won in independent taste tests. One big time. That's not surprising. After all, we were named best pizza chain two years in a row. Anybody can claim to make a better pizza, but it's you, the consumer, who've decided. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Try our Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of up to five toppings for just $10.99. in a long history of exceptional cars from Audi. The Audi A6. Nothing tops ice cream better than Hershey's chocolate syrup. So feel free to pour it on. But do watch out for those cherries. Hurry up, we're missing the best part of the day. Catch anything yet? Just a brake job on a Honda. Pep Boys technicians always draw a crowd. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. When you had the idea, you were just a kid. But lately, you've had to buy into some pretty adult stuff, like strategies for attracting and retaining the best employees and maximizing shareholder value. At Arthur Anderson, we help people make those kinds of decisions which lets them concentrate on things like transforming complex three-dimensional objects into simple digital data. You know, kid stuff. Arthur Anderson, helping in ways you never imagined. I want to be a star. She had the voice. He had the vision. I always love you, Sonny. And the beat goes on. Monday, 9, 8 Central, ABC. Well, we mentioned before that Utah can play some defense. They are amongst the best in the nation and allowing just over 53 points a game. Now, Fresno State has already scored 53 today, but look at the scoring margin. That is what is very impressive. Yeah, and this is more impressive than really giving up 53 points a game because what is the differential? What are you scoring compared to your opponent? 
So it, he, they're outscoring their opponents by 17 points a game. You know, if you give up 50 points a game and you score 50 points a game, that doesn't mean you're a great defensive team. But when you're giving up 53 and, and scoring 70, well, you're putting multiple stops and you're doing the job in terms of holding your opponent. We talk about it. Talk about a much-needed score by Fresno State. Looks like Utah. Did they try to switch the defense? Looks like they went into it's kind of a matchup. Willie Farley for three. Well, that was needed, Mike, to, just to get Fresno State coming out of the timeout again. Coaches have an opportunity to diagram an effective play, and a good job by the Fresno State coaching staff to get a big score. Now they apply a little pressure up top against Andre Miller. See if Miller posts up Demetrius Porter again. Now, that's what he did the last time. He likes the size advantage against Porter. See if he can isolate him. He, you probably try. Oh, good defense. Very nice. Demetrius Porter, you said he will come in and compete. He did right there. Yes, he did. And, and it's, it's coming off a time when Andre Miller posted him up and scored against him. This time, he moved his feet. And you know what? When you play defense, well, what do you do? You don't play with your hands. You play defense with your feet. That was an excellent job that time by Demetrius Porter. Plenty of time for Fresno State. They fought back from a 14-point deficit in the first half of play, greatly due to this man who has been on fire. Alex Jensen fouled him, and that is four on Big Alex. And now you have to make a decision if you're Rick Majerus because you cannot keep Alex Jensen on Courtney Alexander. You may have to take him out of the game with the four fouls. So Rick's got a decision to make in this situation, and obviously an ill-advised foul by Alex Jensen. His momentum brought him into the shooter. But you certainly don't want to foul a guy shooting a, a long-range three-point shot. Courtney, perfect from the line so far today. 31 points. He'll get three of them. Fresno State just will not go away, will they? They had a couple of chances to fold in this game. You see his career high of 32, and it should be well beyond that this afternoon. But the dogs have really showed uh, some tenacity to stay in this basketball game. Multiple substitutions for Utah, including, no surprise, Alec Jensen sitting down with the four fouls. Jensen has four. Remember, Chris Heron is on the bench for Fresno State with four. And now when they bring Altoff back in the game, Fresno State counters by bringing Eli, their, their big center. So you get a little bit better matchup in the center position with the two big men back in the ballgame. Courtney having an absolutely spectacular day. Career high 33 points. He wants to win it for himself, his team, and the man on the bench on senior day, Chris Heron. Harvey gives it away to Killian. Farley is whistled. I, I gotta say, I, I really think the officials are keeping their composure. They, they could have called a few technicals in this game. I mean, Farley's starting to jump up and down and, and, and make all kinds of motions. And I thought the officials are keeping a very even keel. They realize the importance of this game. They realize that these young guys are giving it everything they got. You know, and Farley might have a case. Looks like to me he got leather on that play. Might have hit the man with the body. But allow the players to win or lose the game. Utah winners of 16 straight basketball games. And Killian misses them both. Well, that, now you really have to look at Courtney Alexander. I mean, he's being guarded by Killian, has a big size of this, a tough shot. Farley buries it over Medela. How do you like it? Let's get Farley to make a three. How about an interception? And a foul. On whom else but Medela. Well, all of a sudden, here comes Fresno State. You think they're down and out? They're not. You think they're in trouble? They're not. You think they're out of the game? Forget it. They're coming back. 
Don't forget Payne Weber college basketball on ABC Sports continues tomorrow 3:30 Eastern 12:30 Pacific great regional action number 19 Syracuse against 15th ranked UCLA in the Pauley Pavilion and then the rest of the nation will see Tulane versus North Carolina State or Louisville at Cincinnati check your local listings follow ABC's college basketball action on America online keyword ABC dot sports how about Denny Crumps in Louisville now it'll go to the tournament they're playing well Bobby Huggins hoping to get the Bearcats back on track and how about Willie Farley that's what he can do he steals the ball he causes havoc ties a career high with the five steals more importantly Mike he's given him that perimeter shooting this afternoon Hano Medela remains in the game remember what Fresno State was able to do in the first half with Medela on the bench he has three personal fouls spinning is Alexander and Melvin Eli pushed off underneath Fouls are starting to mount up. There are going to be some guys who are going to spend some time finished early in this afternoon's game. And that foul was a seventh team foul, so Rick Majera is motioning to his team. Hey, guys, we're shooting. We're not taking the ball out of bounds. I thought that Courtney Alexander might post it up and take it to the basket instead of the fadeaway. I mean, you can't. Can, but, but he's made everything else this afternoon. I mean, I actually surprised him that he didn't make it. He was right on that front rim, just didn't get it down. Nate gets the top of the one and one. Tough spot he's playing on the floor, replacing the spot that was always vacated by Michael Doliak. A very, very big spot. Very the, and he's done a good job. He has come on. He has not really shot his free throws especially well this year. And a guy in high school who shot him, you know, he's like a 78% free throw shooter in high school, but has not carried that over. So he's been a very solid performer. Uh, only a sophomore. He's a redshirt sophomore. But you, as you said, big shoes to fill because Doliak, an All-American, and uh, really a guy that dominated on the inside for this Utah team. You saw Melvin Eli sit down with the foul trouble. So Abney is in the game along with Porter, Alexander, Farley, and Roberson. And, and Killian trying to front inside on Alexander. They have to look at Ale they have to look at Alexander if they can. Roberson himself. Well, you know what? It was only a suggestion. <laughs> if you can take it to the goal, take it in and score. Back to a two-point basketball game. Well, it's been an unbelievable it sure college has. basketball game. Payne Weber, college basketball, at its best this afternoon at Sella. If oh, Fresno State... Well, they... The same official called it on Chris Heron in the first half, and he called it in the second half. Closely guarded. You have to be aware of the fact that you have to pick up the ball. Again, a rule I just cannot understand why we have, but if we have the rule, guys, be aware of it. And when you're closely guarded, don't continually dribble a basketball. 16 turnovers for Utah. Farley! Beautiful move, not the result he wanted. Porter creeping up. He expended a tremendous amount of energy catching up. Sometimes you use up all that energy and you can't get it over the top. Hostile environment for Utah here today in Fresno. Miller stopped. They wave it off and call the travel. <laughs> Athletically, Fresno State has the ability to take it to Utah. Now, I thought there was some contact. They could have called a foul in that situation. They didn't. And Farley. Fresno State just can't tie it up. And they're getting all kinds of chances. Roberson! Uh, Terrence Roberson lets fade it away out of bounds. And all of a sudden, guess who's ahead? They come all the way back to take a one-point lead. Andre misses again. Porter quickly up the floor. Alexander! Got to retrace your steps if you're Fresno State because yep. Utah now in a mindset that they're playing a little bit more conservatively. They're getting into half court and they execute extremely well. I think Medela has to come fall. He has to come up big. He's been held in check the second half. Way too strong. 
Basketball will remain in the hands of Utah. Fresno State on an 11-2 run. They lead by one. Payne Weber College basketball will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Zero to your heart in one second flat. The Audi A6. You know something, Lou? Yeah. I know why we got fired. Too much of your yapping and not enough of this. What's that? <clears throat> hey, that was uncalled for. Oh, and electrocuting us last year was okay. That was a joke. Ah, you like jokes, huh? Here's one for you. Two frogs walk into a bar. One of them does this. Ow! Slap the punk! Call security! Who's your daddy? Yeah, hey! Ow! Want a piece of me? Frankie! Look, he's changing colors. Come on, squirt some tears, punk. Frankie! I think they're upset! You're watching Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC Sports. Welcome back to Payne Weber College Basketball. We are going to assume that is Jerry Tarkanian on or, that man's side. Or, or Telly Savalas. We're not sure who it is. Maybe that'll be our next oh. athletic trivia question. But now it is time to talk about our Payne Weber Scholar Athlete. Payne Weber believes that the best investment is an investment in education. Today they salute Hanna Medela as the Scholar Athlete of the game and congratulate him on his own investment in the future. Payne Weber recognizes that commitment to education with a $1,000 donation to the University of Utah for ongoing research. Payne Weber, you can't lose with an investment in your future. 3.8 GPA for Hanna Medela. Oh, he is an outstanding young man and a magnificent basketball player. Killian, well short off the inbounds play. Bulldogs lead by one. That shot was tipped. And Killian with, with a tough cover here, Mike. I mean, he's on Alexander. I think Alexander's going to try to just dribble it out and do that. It didn't get it down. Just a bit short. Couldn't get the roll. Here comes Andre Miller, defended by Demetrius Porter. I'm sure that Rick Majerus made a few adjustments. I would not be surprised now if Utah started to penetrate the ball near the block. Attack inside or Harvey wide open gets it down. But Harvey was open. It's good, good ball movement. They put three or four touches. Harvey coming off a big game on the road at San Jose State. It was what, like eight out of nine? Did he missed only one shot. So he's been a hot player. 17 points. First time he led the team in scoring. There's a pretty look from Courtney Alexander to Larry Abney. Abney with eight. Very unselfish play by Fresno State. They are looking for each other, and they are breaking that defense down. Of course, Utah always looks for each other. A little surprise at Andre Miller. If there's one thing he hasn't done this afternoon, he's missed quite a few opportunities going to the goal. He normally makes all those drives when he's hit in midair because of his strength. Chris Heron is set to check back into the basketball game, as is Melvin Eli. Both Heron and Eli with four fouls. And Demetrius Porter is going to sit down as he fouled Andre Miller a moment ago. I think you're going to see a 
a big hand for Demetrius Porter coming out of the game. Don't forget, when Demetrius went in the game and Harry picked up his fourth foul, Fresno State was down, to my recollection, about 10. And we said that Porter's playing with great confidence. Chris Heron getting his assists and not giving away many turnovers, but the points, as you saw, not coming very easily recently for Chris Heron. Miller rolls in the second. He's got his 15 points. Yeah, I've seen Chris Heron play quite a few games, Mike, and I didn't think it would be possible for Chris Heron to go one of 20 from the field. I mean, he's a guy that is a terrific shooter, but he's lost his confidence, and he has not been healthy. He's, he's, he's had the flu. He's had a few problems. Count it and the foul. How about Melvin Elon? Melvin. Now that is a move in the paint. And it's a move that Melvin Eli has developed. He, he could not have done this early in the year. He's a young man. I'm telling you, he works hard. And he gets his defender in the air. Then he's able to duck under. And Eli knows the importance of that goal. And he makes the first, on top of it. Think he's rolling? Absolutely everything starting to go Fresno State's way. They lead by just two, though. Jerry Tarkanian said they had to play their best game of the season. And they have, to this point. Fighting back from double-digit deficits twice. Harvey, outside to Miller. Defended by Heron. He's got to be careful. Medela gets two men in the air and goes up and lays it in with the left. Big time. That, that was an unbelievable play by Metzala. He's got 18 on the game. How about the pump fake at the top of the key? Get everybody in the air, and then let's just go ahead and slice up the defense. Watch it again. Well, you got to love Metzala. I mean, this is this guy is just, he's got the whole package. And the other thing he does, how about using the left hand on the left side of the court? How about bringing it to the left hand so that it cannot be blocked? And he does a just a really a nice job to get that score. Rick Majerus loves the talents of Hano Medela and of this man, Alex Jensen, who checks in for Nate Altoff. Well, he's got guys on missions. He's got Britton Johnson, who played last year at 6'9", Trace Caton, John Carlisle, all on missions. Uh, they'll be gone for a couple years, but uh, he's got a nice rotation going as you look at the numbers for Mr. Alexander. Perfect. When you get in the 30s, you go from Courtney to Mr. Mr. Alexander now with 34. Perfect day at the line so far for Courtney Alexander. And it continues. I don't think I've ever seen the crowd here in Fresno as, oh. as excited as they are this afternoon. They are on their feet again, Dan. I mean, obviously, this crowd's got to be worth a few points. I mean, they, have, they have been standing the whole game. Selling Arena. Metal gets the three. Five big points on consecutive trips down the floor by Utah for Hano Metala. I think we're looking at another Keith Van Horn. I, th I think Metala reminds you so much of Van Horn. Very active, mobile, can shoot it, can drive to the basket, a good rebounder, plays within himself. Melvin again. Strong move. And Hano had to be careful with the fouls that he is a man. And, and I thought good half-court basketball by, by the dogs. They're going right to the guy who's in foul trouble. And the important thing is Eli is responding. Responded. He is scoring around the basket. Miller gives it away. Jensen wide open. And he hauls in the offensive rebound. Now it's Harvey. Foot on the line, short on the jumper. Alexander has it for Fresno State. See if, they go, see if they go right back inside to Eli. It was effective the last couple of times down the floor, and Eli wants the ball. The guy guarding him's in foul trouble. See if they can reverse him. Courtney wants some room. That is exactly why. He has earned as much room as he wants his teammates to give him but, today. But if Mr. Alexander has the ball, you know, Eli was just a suggestion. I mean, he has been spectacular. Got 37. Unbelievable afternoon for Courtney Alexander. Jensen guarded by Roberson. And Terrence picks up the foul.
amazing game for Jerry Tarkanian's leading scorer, Courtney Alexander. And Alex Jensen shows you his abilities also. A nice move by Alexander. Terrence Roberson picks up the foul. Rick Majerus having a discussion with the officials. Tactically and overall, obviously, Majerus, one of the best coaches in the nation. Well, his record speaks for itself. Here's what he's talking about a moment ago, Dan. Well, here's Jensen, who, who has that ability to, to use his left hand and take it in. May have traveled, but I thought there was contact and a good call, and Jensen gets to the foul line. Alex with 14 points of his own. And he got to battle against Keith Van Horn during Alex's freshman year, and that had to be a great benefit in all those practice sessions. Not, yeah, you, you bet it is. It's, it's, it's always good if you practice against a great player. It makes you better. Utah and Fresno State, a one-point game. Hmm. They think the market's going to go up 20% next year. What are they Tickets, gonna know folks. Gonna I keep reading about tax-efficient investing. Should I be doing that? Anybody else seems See, rates are falling, inflation's low, more stocks or more bonds. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, man. Look at this. Investment strategies for you. Great. Just for me and five million other people. Thank you, Payne Weber. in a long history of exceptional cars from Audi. The Audi A6. So, what'll it take for you to buy this car You're today? You're buying this SUV today and I, I want you to drive out I want you to walk out of here with Just for you, I gotta tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk to my boss. With my supervisor. Hey, we're gonna have a deal, right? Log on to autobytel.com. Arm yourself with dealer invoice and retail list prices. Choose any make, any model. No hassles, no haggling, low prices. Autobytel.com. We're changing the way America buys cars. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Get Selsen Power. Doctors recommend Selsen Blue number one. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsen Power. Races, not rageous. So loaded, you don't eat it, you survive it. Tuesday, the 15th Precinct is about to explode. 10 13 officer shot! All new NYPD Blue ABC Tuesday. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC and Raycom Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber, for the advice. KFC, home of the new extra crispy chicken. Still the crunchiest KFC chicken ever. Nike, who advises you, March Madness, it's spreading. And Audi in the dashing and daringly beautiful A6. What a great game we have for you this afternoon. Payne Weber, college basketball, 78-77. Don't forget, time permitting, coming up after the game, the Buick postgame report with John Saunders and Digger Phelps back in New York. Mike Goldberg, Dan Belwamini. Bulldogs need this victory desperately. It would be their 19th of the season. Terrence Roberson has had a very good second half, and it continues. 11 points for Roberson, all in the second 20 minutes. And Roberson again with the size advantage against Killian, and, and it looks like they're focusing in on that mismatch coming out of the timeout again, productive by Fresno State.
Well, this is when the, the, the big primetime players start controlling the ball. I think a good job by Heron to play against uh, Andre Miller. Jack There's off. your big primetime player defended by Heron. Jensen tried to follow. Miller in traffic. And he is able to draw the foul. He's a terrific rebounder. Yeah, you, you just forget about the fact that Andre Miller can rebound from the guard position as well as any guard in the country. Jerry Tarkanian saying, hey, we're... Jerry Tarkanian saying, we've got to chew a little bit more of that towel because Andre Miller, look at Heron play very tenacious defense. He's working real hard. He's trying not to foul but he doesn't block out. That's one thing he did not do. Instead, he leaked out, trying to go down the other way, and Andre Miller just kept going right back to the glass and got the rebound. And the man who did foul, Melvin Eli, is done for the day. Fouls out with nine points. And that is a very big loss for Fresno State because Eli is shot blocker and a guy that's been giving him inside scoring. You know, you talked about this home crowd has to be worth a couple of points. It's not as impressive as Utah's 33-game home winning streak, but it should be noted that Fresno State has won 12 straight here at Selland Arena. Yeah. They're 15-1 and one this season, their only loss on this floor to Minnesota. Yeah, a very good Minnesota team. Joel Prisbilla, one of the great shot blockers in the country, had 10 shot blocks in that game. Lewis and Clark also outstanding players for Minnesota. So Fresno plays very well at home. 20 second timeout taken by Fresno State. Regardless of the outcome, a great showing of determination and grit by the Bulldogs coming back from 10 plus points down twice this afternoon. Once in the first half, once in the second half. Yeah, they, have, they had an opportunity to fold the tent and they, and they did not. They effectively stayed in the game. And now, you know, obviously with, with a great opportunity to win. We will step aside as Payne Weber College Basketball continues here on ABC Sports. Black insurance on top of my regular health insurance because he has his mother's eyes because I still have to teach him to whistle and because Aflac helps cover what other insurance doesn't if I'm injured Aflac even provides cash to help pay bills so why do I have Aflac did I mention he has his mother's eyes Aflac supplemental insurance without it no insurance is complete Welcome back to Fresno State. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Last year, the WAC sent a record eight teams into the postseason. Question always is, in any conference, how many can get to the big dance as you look at the foul trouble on the floor of Melvin Eli? How many WAC teams can expect to get selected? Well, I, I think there's going to be three WAC teams that, that go, but which three, uh, besides Utah, is, is still up for grabs? I think Fresno State, obviously, if they can win today, I think they will assure themselves of going to the tournament, assuming they don't slip up uh, against San Diego State and Hawaii. But you've got a lot of WAC teams that are deserving to go. UNLV has played well. TCU has done a good job. So there's there's quite a few teams. How about Rice? How about, how about Willis Wilson? Has he done a great job at Rice? Robert Johnson, one of the real good players in the country that people do not know about at Rice. They're having a terrific year. New Mexico and Utah in the top 25 this week. Two minutes. Two on the shot clock, and a tough shot by Alexander won't go. The Bulldogs clinging on to a one-point lead. This is generally Miller time. Well, it's Miller or Medellin. And they're going to run a two-man game, and this is exactly what you want. You do best players to dictate the tempo and make a play. And there's Mental going to let it go. From three. Well, is he big? Hano, I can do it all, Metala. I mean, he's got 24. He's been in foul trouble. I mean, he is a brilliant player. Heron trying to answer. Gets it baseline. 
Now it's Terrence Roberson. Courtney Alexander is on the baseline himself. Roberson, a tough shot, but he was bumped by Jensen, and Alex's afternoon comes to a close. Good game for Alex Jensen, though, with 15 points. Well, we thought at the end of the game he would have 15, 16 points and about 10 rebounds. And a very good defensive effort. It's a big loss for Rick Majer. He, know, he knows it. Because Jensen's a, a, a multi-dimensional player. Can, can play small forward, big guard, can defend a guy on the perimeter. So I think Rick Majerus will take his time making this substitution. And of course, here's the move by Roberson who, who takes it in traffic, goes up for the shot, and, and does pick up a foul. Sixth double-double of the year for Alex Jensen. He had the triple-double last time. These two teams matched up. They are still talking to Rick Majerus as Nate Altoff will finally check in for Utah. I don't think Jensen wants to leave. He's still on the floor. Well, the, the whole, the, when you foul out, don't leave until the official makes you leave. They may forget. Absolutely. Not too often. But I've never seen it happen. <laughs> no, I never have either. You might as well take your time and give your team a breather. Utah has had 15 more free throw attempts in today's game than Fresno State. Well, in the first meeting, when, when Utah defeated uh, Fresno State, they had 29 assists in that game, compared to 12 for Fresno State. And that, that statistic's been turned around here this afternoon. Uh, the, the Fresno State's done a much better job of passing, moving, cutting. How about the second half by Roberson? I think he was blanked in the first half, to my recollection. He was indeed. He's got 13 second half points. 82-82. Well, again, the two-man game. Medela hit a three a moment ago. Now it's Killian from the corner, and he buries it from long range. Multiple weapons offensively for Utah. And the trigger man, of course, Andre Miller. I mean, he will make the proper decision in the clutch. Tough shot by Heron. Misses. Medela rebound, fouled by Abney. Hold on, foul. So much attention comes towards Andre Miller when he has the basketball. Well, you see what they do when, when they really need a goal. It, it's a it's a it's a two man game. Well, we're going to talk about our Audi A6, by the way, as opposed to the A4 and the A8. The Audi A6 play of the game, and here's the shot from the corner by Killian, who gets a great look. And again, Andre Miller is the guy. The last time he hit Metala for the shot. Look at the bench. You think the bench is up? They're ready. They're ready. It goes in. The Audi, a six, play of the game. Eighteen points for Hanno Medela. You don't win 16 in a row and go to the finals of the NCAA tournament without closing the deal. And that's exactly what Utah's trying to do. Misses Making the second, Roberson. Never could control it, and Utah keeps the basketball. Bigger day than 18 for Hano, pardon me. He scored 11 points just from the line. 25 in the game. And you're in a two possession situation. And you know Utah now is going to back it up and run some clock. And I think you got to foul. If you're Fresno State, you got to get after him. It's a no win situation if you foul, but still, you cannot allow the clock to just keep on ticking. You got to get out of Make a foul here. 18 on the shot clock. Well, Under they, 30 in the game. Utah has achieved exactly what they wanted. They, they've run the clock all the way down. And now they're going to try to finish it. Oh, my. How about it? How, how do you like it? Let's Andre run. Miller. Six-point game. Rebound taken by Utah. And a great effort by Fresno State. They're going to come up short. Oh, Utah, they find ways to win the game. This is a sensational basketball team right at the top of their game. A big win for the for the Utes and Rick Majerus, but an outstanding effort, Mike, I thought, by Fresno State. They just came up short. 17 straight victories for Utah. A couple of big threes at the end of the contest, won by Jeremy Killian. Utah wins 88 to 82. The preceding.
has been paid for by Raycom Incorporated. A promotional fee has been paid by Payne Weber. For Dan Belwomany, I'm Mike Goldberg saying so long. From Fresno, let's go to the studio. Welcome back to the Buick Post Game Report. John Saunders and Digger Phelps. Those of you who just watched Utah beat Fresno State, we welcome you. Those of you who didn't watch it, here's the score. 88-82 to 82 is the final. Utah now has won 17 consecutive.